So in this video, we are going to be discussing relationships and the beginning of functions. So a relationship basically is shows off a relation between two sets of points. So typically we just call these relations. And again, we're just comparing how one um, variable relates to another variable. So the relationship between x and y. So what do they have in common? What's different? What's going on between these two things? And we can make x and y be all sorts of different things. So for instance, let's say that in a track meet, the first place um, participant gets five points, the second place gets three points, third place gets two points, and fourth place gets one point. So we can create this relation between the place that they made and the points. So we could say that the so the x coordinate represents the place that they placed in. The y coordinate is how many points they got based off of that. So you can see that we have this new type of notation which has these curly braces. So curly braces denote a set. So what a set is, basically it allows us to look at these relations and say that, hey, only these relations are going to be true for whatever we're looking at. So for instance, there is no thing for fifth place or sixth place or so forth and so on. There's only these first four, and these are the points that you get out of them. So a set basically defines what is actually capable of happening. So we're, we can use these relations, and we can actually look at them in multiple ways. We can look at them as tables, we can look at them as graphs, or even mapping diagrams. So the domain of any relation is going to be the set of the first coordinates. So the very first coordinate is always your x values. So the domain is always going to be associated with your x values. The range of the relation is going to be the second coordinate or your y values. So Anytime we talk about range, we're talking about y values. Anytime we talk about domain, we talk about x values. So if we look at just the set of the domain, which is first place, second place, third place, and fourth place, that's our domain of this relation. And the range is going to be the 5, 3, 2, and 1 points. So we don't show the relationship between how the domain and the range um, connect when we're looking at just domain and range. We just care about the single numbers that are in as the x values or as our y values for the range. So looking at this example, we want to talk about what the domain and the range is. So your domain is going to be your x values. So we care about what x values get used. And one way to look at this is to actually go and drop down like a little line that goes straight down from the starting point and the ending point. And whatever that is, is going to be our range, or sorry, our domain. So we can see that our point, so from 1 to 5, we can see that any point on this line between 1 and 5 is going to be in our domain because it's our x value points. So remember, a line has an infinite amount of points on it. So there are two different ways that we can describe this. So we could start by saying for our domain, and that it is the x values between 1 and 5. So we have this inequality way of saying that. So if you notice that these dots were solid, so we actually get the or equal to piece on both of these inequalities. And basically this notation right here is just saying, hey, we're between 1 and 5 inclusive. So we include the value of 1 and 5. 
So that's one way of writing it. Another way of writing it would be to use uh, bracket notation. So a hard bracket, your starting point, comma, your end point, and a hard bracket there as well. So the difference between a hard bracket and a soft bracket is whether or not the point is included. So we have included and not included. So this would be your solid dots. This would be your open circles. All right, so we can also discuss the range of this function. And to look at range, what we want to do is we want to go and draw lines to the y-axis. So from each of these points, so I'm going to draw lines to my y-axis. And I can see that I'm between this 3 and this 4. So we can say that our range is going to be the number between 3 and 4. So since those are solid dots, we're going to be included. And since we're talking about range, range is your y value. So it's the y values between 3 and 4. Or we can use the bracket notation. So since 3 was included, hard bracket. And since 4 was also included, it also gets a hard bracket. So you can have a combination of hard and soft brackets. Like, for example, you could see um, something that looks like this. So that means that at 3 we had an open circle, and at 4 we had a closed circle. So that's basically how you use that bracket notation. And what's nice about the bracket notation is that you don't have to worry about making sure your inequalities are going in the right direction. You don't have to worry about making sure to put X or Y in the middle. It's just always that hard or soft bracket that you have to worry about. So this is an example of a continuous, continuous relationship. So remember that these points are actually connected using a line, so this is continuous. So when we have discrete graphs, on the other hand, so for example here, we have a list of x and y values. So we don't know whether or not these are connected. We only know these single points. So like if I went and um, quickly sketched, so let's say this is 1, 1. Here's 4, 4, and down here is 8, 1. So I don't know if these are connected. These are discrete. So they are single points on this graph. So because they're discrete, we actually talk about domain and range a little bit differently. So again, your domain is going to be your x values. So that means that this 1, 4, and 8 are going to be my domain. And my range is always going to be my y values, so we get that 1, 4, and 1. So when it is a discrete relationship, so for our domain in this case, we're going to use that bracket notation that we saw earlier, the curly braces. So we got the curly brace, and my x values, we're just going to list them off. We have the x value of 1, we have the x value of 4, and we have the x value of 8. So again, close off curly braces. I'm really bad at drawing curly braces, um, so don't worry about it. Just draw curly brackets, whatever, to the best of your ability. So we can also talk about our range. And again, it's a set because we're talking about individual points. So I'm going to start by drawing my curly brace. And we have a 1. In a y, we have a 4 in a y, and then we have a 1 again. But since we already discussed that 1, we don't rewrite it. So it's already in the set of values. So I'm just going to end it there. So when we're talking about discrete graphs, we are going to list out all the x's for the domain and all the y's for our range, and we're just going to leave out any repeats.
So a function is a special type of a relationship which pairs each domain value with exactly one range. So what that means is that for every x value you have, so no matter what the x value is, it goes to a single y value. So one way to kind of think about this is your domain is your input values, so what you plug in, and your range is your output, what you get out. So a function is basically like a machine. So if you think about a soda machine, what you do is you put in some money and you press a single button. So when you press that single button, you expect to get out a single value out. So what that means is let's say that you hit the water button and you get out of water. That machine worked exactly like it should. That is a function. So what would be not a function is if you hit the water button and all of a sudden you get out both a water and you get out, let's say, a Coke, that's not how that machine should operate. So this is not a function. So when a single input goes to multiple outputs, that is not a function. So um, one way of doing this is um, we're going to look at the vertical line test. So we're talking about that in a little bit. But basically that what that is is if you run a vertical line through a graph and the vertical line only touches a single point on the graph, then it would be a function because we're looking at x values with those vertical lines. So let's look at some examples. So we want to start by giving the domain and the range of this relationship and see whether or not it is a function. So let's start by listing out our domain. So again, these are single points. So that means my domain is going to be a set of numbers because it's discrete. They don't connect. And let's see, we have the x value of 3. We have the x value of 5. We have the x value of 4. And then we have the x value of 3 again. But since I already listed it, we're done. So now let's go and look at the range. So the range is your y values. So I have the y value of negative 2, the y value of negative 1, 0, and 1. So we also want to figure out whether or not this is a function. So remember, that means that a single x value can only have one y value associated with it. So if we look closely, we have two x values, and they both go to different y's. So because we have this happening where we have the same exact x value and their output, the y value is different, this is going to be not a function. And if we had um, quickly graphed this, so we have, let's say, 3, negative 2, and 3, 1, so if I were to have run a vertical line, I'm touching that vertical line at two separate locations. So that's saying that for that x value, there are two points that it goes to, which doesn't make sense. Because again, that's like saying, hey, I clicked the button number three and I got out uh, Cheetos and crackers at the same time that function, that machine is not working. To you, you may be like, yeah, sweet, I got two things for one, but that's not how it should work. So you need to think about functions like machines. So you hitting a single input, you should only get out a single output. So let's go and try this next one. So we want to look at this graph and see what the domain and the range is and tell whether or not the relationship is a function. So Notice that we have lines this time. So since we have lines, we know that this is going to be a continuous graph. So because it's continuous, 
we're going to use either the inequality notation or the bracket notation. So we want to find the furthest point out for our x's. So this right here would be the furthest point out that this graph goes on the left side. So we can look at our x values and going from this point over here, we can shade all the x's all the way to over here. So one thing I just want to make sure that I check is that the little yellow highlighter I drew, there is a red every single place vertically for my yellow line. So that means that it's basically continuous from here to here, and I can go from here to the other place somehow using that line without having to make any jumps. So that means I'm using that full domain. So again, we can go and we can see that this is, looks like negative five. And over here we have positive three. So my, for my domain, we're going from negative five to positive three. So again, because we have an actual point on this um, shape, that we can actually close off that um, point. So we have the or equal to inequality. So for the bracket notation, that would be a hard bracket negative five to three and with a hard bracket at that three as well. Our range, we wanna look at the Y values. So we wanna see the furthest Y value it goes, which seems to be about here. And the lowest Y value is right there. So again, if I wanted to, I could travel on one of these lines in some way to go from this bottom to the top. So that means that it is continuous, there's no breaks. So I can then say that my range goes from, let's see, what is that? Negative two to one. So from negative two, using my y to 1, that's my range, or with the bracket notation, negative 2 to 1. And again, they're hard brackets or, the, or equal to on the inequalities because we have actual points at those locations. So with the y value of negative 2, there is points all across this line over here that I can point to and say, yes, that's true. And I can look at the one as well for the highest location in every single place. We have those points, so they are included within this range and within the domain as well. So if I were to draw a vertical line and drag that vertical line across this graph, I want to see if there are any points, any points where if I drew a vertical line, if it would touch it more than once. So here's me just drawing a random vertical line and notice that it touches that vertical line here and as well here. So because I have those two points, this is also not a function. So we also have what's called mapping diagrams. So what a mapping diagram does is it shows you your x values, your domain, and it shows you your y values, your range, and it gives little arrows to point to each one. So you could write out um, every single one of these as single points. So you need to pay attention to the arrow. So it's saying this negative four is going to two. So remember your domain, your x values are your input. So it's saying, hey, if you input negative four, you're going to get out two. So I could rewrite this as points if I wanted to, just so you understand how this mapping diagram works. It's saying I put in negative four, I get out two. It's saying that I put in negative eight and I get out two. It's saying I put in four and I get out one. And it's saying I put in five and I get out one. So again, the starting location is going to be my domain. And since these are individual numbers, this is going to be our set notation. So my domain is going to be negative 4, negative 8, 
4 and 5. So I didn't have any repeats there. My range is just going to be that 2 and 1. So if we're looking at this, it's saying that each input goes to a single output. It's okay that two of these inputs went to the same output. That still makes sense. If you think about the vending machines, there's still multiple buttons that give you the exact same thing. So there may be four or five buttons to give you a water or two or three buttons to give you a Coke or a Diet Coke or whatever it may be. So it makes sense to have these separate inputs still going to the same location. This is a function. So what would be not a function, so if I came over here and just redrew this mapping diagram, let's say negative 4, negative 8, and we have 1 and 2, and I said, hey, this negative 4 goes to this 1, but negative 4 also goes to 2, negative 8 just goes to 2. So the fact that this input of negative 4 went to two separate locations, this is not a function. So it's okay to end up at the same place. It's not okay for a single input to go to multiple places. So here are two you tries for you to try. List out what the domain and range of each of these relationships are and say whether or not they are a function. So on the first one, your domain was negative six, negative four, one and eight with your range being one, two and nine and it is indeed a function. On the second one, you would have had two, three, and four for your domain with your range being negative five, negative four, and negative three, and this one is not a function.